I'm not as loud as Mr. Chairman Fanmo, but thank you all for coming today. Today is a regular meeting. It is Tuesday, June 27, it's 9.02. Mr. Kirk, please call the roll. Vice Present. Present. Commissioner Meadows. Present. Commissioner Obama. Present. Commissioner Obama. Present. Next is Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have a planning? Ms. Corbo, where are you at today? Could you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge
Darian Fernandez, Nathaniel Evans, George Hahn, you've asked us, Lord God, to pray. And we bring before you our present president, Donald Trump. He has a fiery spirit, but by your Holy Spirit, in your time, you can calm him down and speak through him your will for this country. Thank you, Father. In the name of your beloved Son, our mediator, Yeshua of Israel, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have you be seated, Mr. Chairman? Yes, I uh, just wanted to thank you for the beautiful prayer. Uh, however, uh, our community is, is Ms. Susan Baker, but uh, Mr. Malone may have needed your prayers. <laughs> thank you so much. So true, so true, Commissioner. Next on the, on the agenda is approval of agenda. Commissioners, you have opportunity to review it and make any amendments or withdraw any items. Make a motion to approve, Chairman. I'll go ahead and second, Mr. Chairman. Motion has been made and second. Clerk Carl Wolf. Commissioner Meadow. Yes. Commissioner Donovan. Yes. Commissioner Gagnon. Yes. Commissioner Gagnon. Yes. Thank you. Next item is awards and recognitions. This is item A, a proclamation presented to Juanita Cordova. The, from the treasurer's office on her retirement until Juanita. Juanita, I'm sorry. What, what did I say? Juanita. I think I tried to say Juanita. <laughs> see, the thing is, is that the chairman doesn't come, he doesn't miss many meetings, so it makes me nervous when I have to show up. And I can't even read anymore. It's getting flat up with our glasses. So we have a proclamation, and I have our our manager of the Honorable Court will start with the proclamation and then we can take pictures. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I did kind of ask if I would get the honor of reading this. Proclamation of the Tells County Board of Commissioners honoring Ms. Juanita Cordova upon her retirement and recognizing her dedicated service to Tells County or to the County of Tells. Whereas in 1971, Juanita Cordova began her distinguished career with Tells County as a cashier clerk in the treasurer's office under then treasurer Leopoldo Martinez and chief deputy Manuel Valerio. She worked in this capacity through 1976. Juanita was then elected Taos County treasurer from 1977 to 1980. She then served as the chief deputy treasurer from 1981 to 1984 under treasurer Manuelita Monroe. In 1985 to 1997, Juanita worked in the private sector, where she worked in the insurance business and as a title researcher. Juanita returned to Taos County Treasurer's Office in 1998. Throughout her career, Juanita advanced from a Juanita advanced from a delinquent account technician to the senior delinquent account specialist. Since 1998, Juanita has worked under the administration of Taos County Treasurers Lorraine Poca Ruiz, Evangeline S. Romero, and Susan K. Trujillo. And Whereas, to her fellow employees, Juanita has been both a mentor and a friend. In the words of her co-workers, she is described as helpful, knowledgeable, lively, strong, exuberant, generous, lovable, and as the firecracker of the office. <laughs> Juanita is always willing to teach and share the knowledge and skills that she has acquired throughout her career, and to especially make sure all of her co-workers are well-versed in the property tax code. And whereas Juanita has been an invaluable asset to Taos County and its constituents for her work on delinquent taxes by making sure that properties are kept by the property owners and are not transferred to the state of New Mexico for auction. This also ensures that Taos County keeps all penalty and interest from these properties. Juanita has a wealth of knowledge regarding property tax law and history that will be irreplaceable. And whereas Juanita has demonstrated, demonstrated professionalism 
integrity, and an incredible work ethic, which has made her an exemplary employee and leader. We honor her for her service to Taos County. Whereas Juanita Cordova retires on the 30th day of June, 2017, after 33 years of commendable dedication to Taos County. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Taos County Board of Commissioners does hereby recognize and honors Juanita Cordova upon the occasion of her retirement and does hereby proclaim the 29th day of June, 2017, as Juanita Cordova Day throughout the county of Taos and encourages all citizens to recognize her outstanding service to the county of Taos. Thank you, Ms. Cordova. It's very true.
uh, Jason Ryan, who is with us today, will be doing the honors of Penny and Kelly. Um, their friendship goes back a long ways as well, and I think it's very appropriate that his, his squad sergeant um, be allowed the honor to do his Penny today. And then we'll ask Kelly to speak for, I told him no more than 15 or 20 minutes. <laughs> we'll ask him to speak just a little bit about his experiences in joining the agency. Thank you. Request for our application to see if, if it can even be located. 
Um, but what recourse do we have even if, it, if that's the case? It certainly didn't receive the attention that it deserved, and uh, the unresponsive and unprofessional way we were treated is exactly the type of uh, the type that gives bureaucrats a bad name, which is unfortunate. Task Land Trust is resilient, and we will survive. But I wonder how many elderly folks who have lost their agricultural status or whose calls haven't been answered are now under foreclosure. Now, rather than investing $14,000 in agriculture, trails, or wetland restoration that would directly benefit the public, we will be paying our taxes. We respect the need for tax collection, but as a 501c3 nonprofit recognized by the IRS, Secretary of State, and County Clerk, how, how can it be claimed that we're not a charitable organization? I'm quite certain, as evidenced by our lost application, lack of, of communication, and long after the fact determination letter, that the assessor's office is not functioning properly. Though we're sure the county will put our money to good use, it's a shame that the community-focused project will suffer a significant setback because of this incompetence. Um, thanks for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yeah. Obviously, we can't make any decisions, and it's uh, just comments from the public. But at some point, uh, I, I would want to, uh, not today, but at some point, I'd like to hear the assessor's office uh, uh, decision regarding uh, that exemption. Thank you. Is there any other comments? Citizens, citizens concerns? <clears throat> None of those uh, citizens concerns at 9.29. We'll go ahead and move on to uh, item 7 presentations. This is a discussion regarding the following of the county lobbyist report, Gabriel Cisneros Universal Professional Services. Mr. Cisneros, thank you for coming this morning. We're on track for maybe a quick meeting today, so if you can help us out here. <laughs> Yeah, I ask you if you want a long or a short report. But thank you, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee or commission. Uh, thank you for allowing me to, to serve as a consultant and lobbyist during the last legislative session. As you know, we had a few. We had a, a regular session open on January 17th closed on March 18th. We had a special session, May 24th, ended on the 30th. Before I start, I'd like to uh, thank your, uh, you personally and the staff, Leandro, uh, Brent, uh, Lori, Montoya, and your members of the commission that attended during the, uh, the, the sessions. Uh, anything we needed, they were there uh, to present, to give input. Um, uh, this was a session that was very challenging for, for not only, you know, county commissioners, schools, uh, hospitals. You're talking about budget issues, not only that affected communities, but affected uh, county commission, municipalities, hospitals, and so forth. Before I tell you, we have some good news for the county. It wasn't all bad. We had uh, a session that budget problems, which, uh, before I get to that, want to also thank our, our senator and representative, there were champs, as far as uh, making sure that there was the least impact to the uh, county as possible, but yet they were facing some heavy challenges, uh, challenges throughout the state, challenges that uh, if you have $10, you can't spend 12, and they were trying to see how they could balance last year's budget and this year's budget and next year's budget. So it was not an easy process. Uh, the, uh, the challenges that we faced first were, okay, yes, 
is down for every one dollar in gas that we lose, that's $10 million to the state. So I'm just going to give you a, a scenario on the state budget. The state has always had like 8 to 10 percent budget reserves. During the regular session and the special session, with a few tax increases, they were able to bring up the, the those balances to eight to nine percent. But to get the House and the Senate and the executive to agree, uh, she vetoed portions of the tax increases that we're now facing maybe one percent cash reserves. When that happens, and now the, the gas going down, there might be another special session because uh, if the revenues don't come in, then we're, we're heading towards that direction. But all in all, the senator and the representative were there meeting with everybody. We, we had Leandro there, we had Brent there, some of the commissioners, uh, the chair was there, uh, and one of my tasks was, we had a project that was a priority for Taos County that was coming in late May. And that was a, a project that you prioritized with the town of Taos. Let me tell you, in the, in the interim, we have Mr. Representative Gonzalez, who's the chair of transportation, and we also have Senator Cisneros, who is the uh, Vice Chair of Senate Finance. So we said, okay, there's no capital outlay. The county, this is their priority. So we set up meetings with the uh, Secretary of Transportation, their staff, and we were able to, we were able to, um, to work together with the staff and the secretary, with the senator and representative, to fund school bus routes monies. And they're done. And Camino and Medio, as you know, is how many bus routes does it include? There's a few. So we're able to uh, get some, <coughs> some commitments to help with our project for Camino de Medio. We haven't finished the process yet because there's still litigation for uh, for some of the items of the special session and it's still with the courts. But we feel very, very comfortable that uh, part of Camilo de Medio or maybe the, the whole uh, full amount will be funded. So that's in, in place right now. So that, that that's what we're going for. The other good news that we had is that right during the, the first day of the session, we had coordinated a meeting in Dallas. And this was with EPA. Members that attended were the town manager, the chair or uh, commissioner, and mayor, Leandro. And we had. Uh, also, the fire department members from there and WH Pacific. We coordinated this this meeting because of the impact the uh, closure of the mine is having on not only Taos County, the Wild Rivers, the different agencies. So it went very well, very well. This was Ron Curry, who was the EPA secretary or whatever the executive director is no longer there there was a change in administration but he put us in contact with everybody at the um, at the federal level super fund division regional council water quality division and compliance and enforcement division so we had numbers to all of them they were also very helpful in saying we can help. One of the issues that we had, 
And this is not working against Chevron or uh, any. We went over there to see if we could set up a joint effort to help each other in mitigating all these issues that we have. So it, was, it turned out to be a very positive meeting, which for the county right now, there's issues with water rights. We don't want water rights to be in the county. There's issues with transportation, gross receipts. Uh, when there's a super fun site, uh, property values go down. We're trying to see how we can uh, help the county, the municipality, the town of Taos, anybody that's affected with uh, the closure uh, uh, to continue the dialogue. So with that, with that meeting, the main guy from, uh, I guess his name is Sam, asked and this is regarding the county, ask the county manager that they're going to hold some public hearings, and they've had already. And uh, the next thing, he wanted a list of projects that he would want fund by EPA, Chevron, or whoever, and that's in the, in the making right now. So the, the, the good thing is that when he says, I want this list, we're going to sit down, and we're going to go over them. That was very positive, also for the mayor and for the county manager here. So the process now, what we're working on is that Leandro here will be working on a, a list here, and uh, there's a meeting that's probably being set up for July 17, 13, 13, 13, and that's probably the last time that they're, well, not the last time, but one of the last times before we submit our, our, uh, our request that he asked for. So hopefully, you know, one of the things that you were talking about is, you know, like the water, water rights, we don't want they can give some water rights for economic development. Uh, roads, they're using the roads, you know, and uh, how to maintain those ro roads that they're using. The gross receipts that are, you know, that contractors are paying, is the county uh, getting that? Having a sit on the table or at least being contacted when there's changes uh, with the mine or Chevron or the closing. So those things are all happening right now. So very, very positive. If we can get some some monies from EPA or Chevron for the county, and they're, they're willing to also help the county, because one of the things is when you're evaluating all the post, post out documents and everything, you need professional help. You need uh, engineers. You need, um, and they're willing to help, like they help quest us to set up a fund so that they can pay for the engineers so that we don't have to pay from the county for that purpose. So, um, with that, and the challenges that we have with the, the counties, uh, not with the counties, with the legislature and the federal government, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, they were thinking, uh, you know, the, uh, the administration, the federal administration of Trump was also cutting, was trying to cut CDBG programs, which I think still surviving in Los Alamos and all that. But every time there's a cut, every time there's a cut, whether it be for the schools here, whether it be for the hospital, it affects the county. We were there fighting daily because there were bills that came out, bills that we tried to kill. The association of counties was there. Leandro was there making presentations. Uh, the uh, municipal league, the, uh, all the nonprofits, it's affecting everybody. 
But we came out all right. We're, we're like, right now we're just like trying to keep above water to see where we're going to come out. But the county right now, I feel, came out pretty well if we can get this to uh, things happening there with the Chevron. And uh, we need to set up a meeting. I spoke to the representative yesterday and I said, okay, now the everything's still a little bit of litigation in Albuquerque and Santa Fe so that we can get the middle and medial going because that's that's a project that's already designed, ready to go. So that's it. Uh, I'm open for questions, comments, concerns. Commissioner? Commissioner Mr. Chairman, well thanks for the report, Gabe. Okay. Uh, very informative. Um, so when you say we have a chance at full funding on Medio, is that for our portion and that, does the town have the same opportunity through the school bus routes? Well, we have, it's jointly, we went jointly, so hopefully we can get the, um, and, 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 and we told the secretary, I says, uh, we know the, the shortage in monies and everything, if we can get phase funding, that's fine too. So we're working on, um, hopefully, between both, if we can get some uh, for the town and some for the county, uh, the lead will be the county, that's uh, what we're talking about. So uh, the next meeting, uh, we'll be uh, setting up uh, the meeting with the senator, the representative, and probably the secretary. So just so Sometime this summer, I guess. No, 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 like soon. Soon. Okay. Well, we can, yes, soon. Now that uh, everything is done, now we need to move on that project. And on, on the 13th, after this one, uh, you need, uh, Leander, you might want to talk to the commissioners here to see what their priorities are for that list, or you're going to come up with a list, and uh, because there's some things there. And I guess, uh, you know, to, to comply with everything that uh, Chevron has going, it's not only Chevron, EPA wants to help, and it's all the different agencies that are going to get together. Because one of the questions we brought up, and I brought up over there, okay, Chevron closes, they're gone, we find something out that, that's wrong, who's going to be responsible for that? So those are issues that we're asking, and uh, we want answers. Uh, one more quick one. Uh, what do you think the uh, possibility of CDBG applications going forward? This year, fine. It's just, yeah, yeah, this year, so far, and the it has increased to 750000 so So that you can get economic development, and you can get uh, a CDBG uh, uh, application. So well, that's good news. Yeah, but... You know, one of the things that, like legal funding and water trust board funding, all those things, you know, when you're talking about legal, it, it, it always has something <coughs> that really hurts communities and, and municipalities. It's the employment factor. If you're going to get that money, you have to have a business with uh, the employment factor. In it. You have to have so many employees in there to work. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioners? Commissioner O'Donnell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for being here, Mr. Cisneros. Uh, were you able to get a split contract between us and the town to pay the $35,000 that uh, was paid to you? I'm not aware of that. Uh, I, I was working for the county now. We did not get that complete at this time. I not completed that. Is there still a hope to complete that, or is that not? I have not spoken to the city manager in a while on that topic. All right. Uh, Mr. Cisneros, how many committee hearings did you testify at? And what, what committee hearings were they? I don't, I don't recall there were as many. I, and a lot of times it's not testimony from, from me that I'm, it's working the, the uh, different legislators and, and uh, Work, uh, making sure that the, uh, the the managers and whoever's are involved for different committee hearings. So I, I don't really go before the 
the committees on this ask for. I work with the senators and representatives. And if there's something that um, that they feel that they want me to go talk to, I do that. Could you please provide me a list of the other uh, municipalities and governments that you sure. worked for during this session? Sure. Who are they? Uh, it, it, they're listed on the um, website for the, you know, the uh, lobbyist information. I'm asking you, how many did you work for? Seven or eight. Anything else, Commissioner? Um, I think, in my opinion, I would like the Commission to have a meeting to decide uh, next year if we need a lobbyist, we don't need a lobbyist, I asked NMAC that question. I never really got a clear answer given uh, the budget uh, situations. Um, so that would be something I'd like the commission to uh, look at. And if we did, I really prefer an RFP process. If we don't do it, that's fine too. But I want the opportunity for the commission to, uh, to make that decision. I know Mr. Cordova was at many of the hearings, so he was testifying. Um, so, you know, at some point it's like, is it we're really getting our money's worth uh, for the services given the state budget crisis? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Monroe. No Thank you, Mr. Snells, for your presentation, and we'll get back with you on potential meetings that we need to get. Better. Sure. And then, uh, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, I'll get to you because we need to set up this. We don't want to drop the ball on this two things that we have things going on right now. So, uh, thank you. Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Chairman, my question is more to our county manager. Is, um, is it your intention to hire uh, a lobbyist for the incoming uh, legislature? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, the budget we have doesn't give us a lot of room. So to be perfectly honest, we don't really have the budgeted funds to do that. Um, we're hoping on a 30-day session that I can do as much work as possible with Mr. Jaramillo and the rest of you. We hope that we can get our priorities streamlined and see if we can control our 30-day session this year on our own. Um, it's truly budgetary constraints for us at this time, and the state has their own, so it is really like swimming upstream often, oftentimes. It's, Mr. Cisneros mentioned it can be very frustrating and I do feel I can represent the county um, in the committee meetings and testify when needed to at least get what the fundamental revenues we need. And when is our current contract with Mr. Cisneros? I believe it's on the fiscal year, so it would be at the end of the week. <laughs> so if you don't want me to proceed that, you know, uh, on, on the things that we have going, uh, you might want to let me know because I don't want to uh, step on your shoes if I'm not, a, you know, working with uh, the county. So you'll definitely make contact. Yeah, because those those are big projects that we have on the table. Right? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, may I comment on the line for a moment? I, sure. I think it, it, just, it ties in with what uh, Mr. Smith has provided. Yeah, I, I wanted to say that I've had conversations with Chevron's special counsel in the last couple of weeks about possibly getting a pass-through for the county to have legal or geotech representation. I've also talked to an attorney who specializes in environmental issues and Superfund, and you know we really need to look at the issue of future damages for the county and the possibility of getting some kind of settlement with Chevron and getting ourselves to the table. And I think that's very possible, but I just want to say that, that you know, in legal, we're working on that, and I want to make sure we all work together towards that same end. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I have one more comment, and thank you. Um, Mr. Cisnotis, I was rather disappointed when I read over your invoices. They were very vague, and I had hoped to see a line item of what exactly you did during the session, so I just wanted to make that comment. I was disappointed with the invoices you submitted. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I want to say that uh, Ms. O'Donnell asked you a question about who else you represented at the legislature. You said about seven or eight entities. Uh, do you remember who they are? 
can you tell us? Yeah, the, the uh, founder of the Dallas County. Uh, we have uh, Tula Rosa. We have uh, the um, uh, I represent private companies, not that Pueblo. I have the going down the list. Um, I can get through the breakdown. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Gabe. Again, okay. um, I, I do feel, uh, although you know, there's opinions from other commissioners here that uh, what you do and don't do, but there is always the day-to-day -day operations of having those connections and keeping senators and representatives up to date. Uh, part of the instrumental process of getting EPA is is uh, having those contacts that you've had over the years, the relationships you've developed, which most of the time when I've been up at the state legislature, door doesn't open always that easy unless you've already had somebody prepared for that senator or representative or those committees to start listening. So um, again, I, you know, we'll, we'll look at what, uh, what this commission decides to do and, and we'll see if there's some, some life viability for having you there in the future for meetings with EPA and if you have a role in there, we you know, we'll definitely consider that and go from there. And that's very critical because we're like very close for opening some big doors for the county. And uh, I've been very instrumental in setting all that program together. So um, it, right. it's up to you guys. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you. Next item is item eight, some minutes, June 6, 2017, regular commission meeting. Commission. Motion to approve, Chairman. I'll go ahead and second this, Chairman. Motion in May, second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll roll. Commissioner Meadow? Yes. Commissioner Powell? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Yes. Next item is item nine, this is Department of Matters. We have item A, Adult Detention Center, Nelson Obita, Jail Administrator. This is Dallas County Adult Detention Center Policy and Procedures. Is Mr. Obita here? Yes. Um, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, the AC policies um, have been worked on by both the detention center staff and legal. This is a draft for your review. It's a very large document. You'll see some highlighted areas, especially on page 163, where we still have questions of New Mexico Association and counties. We'll be sending this document on to them for review and comment. But we'd like to hear from you um, as you have time before July 11th to get back to us on any concerns you have. And um, I just want to thank Andrew Montoya for his commitment to these policies, his hard work. Um, he even spent, I think, evenings and weekends working on these, so I want to say thank you for that. Thank you. And Commissioner, do you have any quick comments for Mr. Obeyta? Anything that we can uh, ask at this time to look forward into the policies and procedures, Commissioners? I just want to thank both of you. It's an excellent document. You worked really hard. Um, I think this will go a long way towards accreditation. Uh, I, I did want to point out at the NMAC meeting, they uh, suggested uh, that jail staff be trained in Narcan administration and um, they also suggested at some point, I don't want to hold this up, that, that there be, once you do get trained, there be policies and procedures on how you administer Narcan. Right. And um, they also gave us Narcan kits that, that the new push is to have everyone carry these in the event of uh, an emergency, and that's kind of what the state is pushing towards. Um, I see some 
some uh, reactions, but whatever, that's what they presented at the NMAC for commissioners and, and various other people. So I have my kit. I still need to keep review how to administer, but they did have a professional. So I don't know where you stand on this, but they, they were recommending that jails have this too. So I'm just bringing that up. And, and Commissioner, just uh, for your information, we do have uh, Narcan uh, in our jump bags, being our first aid kits. Uh, we have them both in housing, one in booking, and one in medical. Uh, as, as we know, we, we've gone through our 40 hour aid services, and in our 40 hour aid services, we've had uh, correctional health partners, the, the provider, who is Steve Parker, he has gone in and he has uh, presented on how exactly to dispense the Narcan. Uh, it's not difficult. Uh, it's basically a, a nasal nasal spray. Um, so uh, we have used it in our facility, and it's very effective. Uh, there is some concerns when we talk about that. Uh, I have mentioned to my staff and the concerns always revolve around liabilities. Um, I have been through several facilities, and in all these facilities, we have never had Narcan on our duty belt. Um, I will be meeting with NMAC with Art Murphy and Manny Romero, I believe, on July 18th is when we rescheduled it for. And uh, we will talk about that. Uh, I actually have several other meetings uh, with uh, outside uh, entities, and they do want to talk about naloxone. Uh, they want to speak with me. As a matter of fact, I believe my next meeting would be on July 12th, and that would be with uh, Miles uh, Bonnie. And again, you know, the concern always revolves around liabilities. Uh, is it effective? Most definitely, it is effective. Uh, do we have it in our facility? Yes, we do. Have our staff been developed and trained? They have uh, in our 40 and hour, 40 hour in service. Uh, have we utilized it? Yes, we have. Has it been proven to be effective? Yes, it has. Uh, normally when we dispense the, the Narcan or Naloxone, uh, immediately we will re-inventory the bag and we will replace it. So it is it is uh, available if needed. Um, so I think that we are probably one step ahead of the game. Um, I just don't know how we feel about uh, having the officers keep it on their duty belt. That is the concern, and I think there could be some uh, legal concerns over that, so that's why I'm very skeptical when it comes to that. Um, that's pretty much what I have with the locks of Narcan. Thank you, Chair. Narcan is used when someone's in danger of overdosing. Correct. And how about uh, naloxone? Naloxone is the same same thing. Um, and and if. Uh, officers didn't have it on their belt. You feel confident that in an emergency, it would be readily enough available to save the person? It's readily available. Uh, as I mentioned, we have it in three different locations. We have one in housing control, which is seconds from each pod. Uh, we have another one in medical. So if it's during uh, medical services, which would, you know, CHP, they, they work 12 on, and they have 12 hours on call. Uh, normally, when a code is called, medical knows to deliver the jump bag right away. So at which point in time, if necessary, the, the item, the, the Narcan or naloxone is in the bag. What's the specific liability concern on carrying it in the officer's belt? Well, the officers, Again, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, we're talking about giving Narcan or Naloxone to a detainee, and their concern is is what if something happens as a result of this? Because there there is certain reactions to every medication. Are we going to be held liable? 
And at what point do we say, well, we have a concern? Uh, I think that they've even uh, gone to the union in regards to that because they have talked about this. And uh, so I think that it is a topic that we really need to talk about. Uh, I believe that uh, I'm a firm believer in it. I'm a firm believer in it. But we, we still need to revisit all the legal parts of it. Well, there's obviously liability concerns if you have it and someone's in danger and you don't use it. Right, so exactly. Thank you. Commissioner, Mr. Chairman, so Mr. Aveta, thank you for, for being here. Um, and I can understand the concerns that you have as far as the liability. Well, what are some of the um, drugs that it works to stop a person from, from dying? And how does it work? So what are the, some of the drugs? What are the drugs? What are the drugs that if a person overdoses on? OK, well, are there specific ones that it works against? Uh, heroin. Primarily heroin. Primarily heroin. And so when you are dealing with a, a person that is potentially overdosed in heroin, how do you know that that's what well, overdose is? Well, and, and again, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, and, and that's a good question, because you don't know exactly what that individual is overdosing on. So if they're overdosing, and, and I'll just say this, let's say on uh, uh, crystal meth, it's not, it's not going to really do anything. It's not going to do anything to that person. Um, if they're overdosing on heroin, it's going to bring them out of it that fast. So it's specific for heroin. And so uh, I know that uh, Commissioner O'Donnell has uh, a container. Right. And I know that the first 20 individuals that showed up to that workshop all received one. So uh, is that a liability? I mean, how, if, if they're passing out Narcan to uh, individuals that go to the how does it work? I mean, well, you know, and again, I mean, I, I believe as long as we show, show good faith effort, you know, in preserving life, I think that we're covered, uh, you know, uh, but, so Again, Murphy's Law kind of kicks in and things that uh, shouldn't happen will happen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the mentality is, is well, I, I never asked for that. And now I'm, now I'm uh, uh, getting these after, uh, let, let's just say I'm getting headaches. I'm, I'm, I was allergic to something that this Narcan had. And that's the mentality. Um, do, as I mentioned, uh, you know, to Commissioner Blackmore, I'm a firm believer in it. You know, there, there's other, uh, there's other uh, medications out there that are very similar, that have been proven, but I don't think that we're there yet. Um, I think as time goes, we, we probably will be moving on to other, other medications that uh, uh, are going to prevent overdoses. Commissioner Lowe. Thank you. Um, if I may, I'd like to give you the contact of the, uh, the behavioral health guy who did the training for us. There is a, a bill the governor signed that uh, waives any liability for anyone administering this drug. So liability is covered. I, I don't have the specific name of the bill, but the governor did sign it, um, so uh, people could try and sue, but they, they, they cannot really uh, uh, um, see any kind of uh, damages. And what he explained is um, it's a very safe drug. It's used for heroin and uh, people who are ODing on um, Oxycontin, various pills mm -hmm. have heroin in it, uh, opioid derivatives. Um, so the answer to the liability has been um, fixed by the governor. And I know I talked to the sheriff about this. They've had seven successful reversals of Narcan uh, since they've begun to use it. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Vice Chairman, I just want to take the moment to thank you both. I know that uh, this has been a long time in the making and it's truly an important step for our future accreditation, which has been a goal of Mr. Abetas from his inception with us. And uh, I want to thank you for getting it. And I do see that we'll be reviewing it yearly, so we should start now for next year. Great. And, you know, it has been a long time going. Uh, we started working on the policies uh, pretty much day one when I uh, and I accepted the appointment for Taos County. And, uh, you know, Andrew has been an asset, you know, for me because uh, he, he's very precise. He, he looks into everything. Uh, I generated it and I just needed that extra set of eyes and Andrew has been, he's been great. So I, I do want to recognize that. And uh, I do believe that these poli the policies are very critical to the NMAC and to any accreditation, or for that matter, to any facility. Uh, you know, we all know that detention facilities, uh, uh, there's always, there's people always looking for tort claims. I mean, as long as we were covered and we have it in policy, we have our staff developed uh, and trained, I think that we'll be good. Thank you, Mr. Bittag. Again, by July 11th, submit any comments or any concerns that you might find through the policy and procedure process, and we'll hopefully get it for Right, and, and just to, to add to this, I know that uh, Lieutenant Montoya, Andrew, he, uh, we were looking at some policies yesterday that uh, there may need to be a little bit of revisions made. Uh, so I know that uh, Andrew, uh, You'll be speaking with uh, Susan and see what we can do. They're, they're very minimal. Uh, there was, a, again, there was a policy change on the way it was identified uh, through the NMAC conference. And, you know, we've, uh, we, right now we have it as special management. Prior to that, it was segregation. We moved up to special management, and now, NMAC is calling this uh, new special management policy restrictive housing. So there will be just a few modifications to that, but nothing that severe. I do believe that uh, we are practicing this policy. We have had, uh, since my appointment, we've had uh, uh, two site visits. Uh, our last site visit from NMAC, uh, They've uh, reviewed all the documentation, they've reviewed the policies, and for in fact, they have seen that we, are, we actually are following the policy and procedure, and we have working documents to support that. So uh, we have another site visit coming up, as I mentioned, uh, July 18th, and uh, it's very important that we continue the practice. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioners? Hearing none, a good week. Just real quick, I did hear good comments from NMAC when they were here, so uh, good work. Thank you, and you know, that goes to the staff. Thank you very much. All right, next item. Item 9B is a, who's going to do this presentation? She's on her way. She's on her way? I started it. Okay. This is the creation of a job description for the foster grandparent senior companion program clerk who is a full time apprentice position. Ms. Weber, thank you for coming in. Yes, good morning. Um, this is correct. There is a job description before you for consideration and approval for the foster grandparent senior companion program supervisor. This is a position that was previously temporary in status, however, Grant funding has allowed us to now process this as a full-time grant funded position. Do you have any questions? What's the grant? What's the grant I should know? What is the grant? I'm sorry. Uh, what is the source of the grant? I'm not sure the particular oh, source. Mr. Chairman, uh, we do have a member of the senior committee that I can answer that from the senior program, but I do believe it's our federal grants that we receive for foster grandparent program and senior companion. It's federal? It's federal and state funded. Thank you. Ah, I have a show. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, federal and state funded programs. Any other? 
Questions, comments, commissioners? One, Mr. Chairman. We will have line approval today. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Commissioner Middle. Yes. Commissioner Donald. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item, we'll be moving on to resolutions and ordinance. Discussion consideration regarding the following. This is uh, item A is a resolution 2017-33. Resolution by the House County Board of Commissioners adopting an implementation of the integrated pest management policy. Governing the use of pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides for county for the Taos County. Ms. Susan Baker. Chairman and Commissioners, this is basically the same policy and resolution you saw last time with significant changes to the signage section at the very end. I also got a red line with some wordsmithing suggestions from the committee that Councilman Hahn is involved with. And the version that I passed out this morning has those changes. I'm sorry we didn't get them into your packets. We got them late. But they're helpful because the wordsmithing that they did doesn't change the substance of anything. It just helps it match some of the guidelines more accurately. But I think the significant change from what you saw last time is the signage section. And it provides for specifics on which, when signage should be posted and um, how long. And if you have any questions, um, I think the committee's here today, and I'm glad to answer any questions. Mr. Mr. Chairman, sure. Mr. Vaughn, Councilor Vaughn, how are you? Good morning. Um, yesterday on Facebook, I saw that uh, there were residents of the Pilat area that were complaining that the state highway had been spraying the edges of roads uh, on the ground. And so I was wondering how we could possibly work towards uh, getting the state to do exactly what we're trying to do if, if they haven't already. Mr. Chair, Commissioner McDonald, <clears throat> I hadn't even thought about that. I'm gonna guess it's gonna require maybe uh, legal, perhaps with both entities reaching out to DOT. Uh, Obviously, there are going to be jurisdictional issues, but perhaps considering the policy and the unifying effort of the town and county, uh, they can pay attention. They're going to be doing a lot of road work up there, so point well taken. I can take that back to town hall and maybe uh, what the commission directs today, uh, relay any action uh, towards the manager or our town attorney. Mr. Chairman, I, I would like the county and the town uh, to pursue this um, because obviously it's we have a lot of fragile areas and, and we have areas of the Rio Grande that are used by fish uh, people that fish, grafters and everyone else um, and if these areas are, are being sprayed uh, that contamination is, is not only in, in the air but also in the water as well and a lot of that water is, is used for used downstream for, for people who are hurting, even drinking water for livestock and humans. So um, I, I hope that we can pursue that um, fairly soon and, and you know the, the same amount of enthusiasm that you place into this and I really appreciate it but as well as the committee. Um, I think we need to, to use as well and pursue what the state is doing at the state level. Any other comments, concerns on the resolution? Commissioner O'Donnell. I want to thank Ms. Baker for doing all the work and making the necessary uh, revisions. And in line with Facebook, uh, someone is circulating a petition asking the governor to ban a certain uh, ingredient we won't say, but we know what it is. Um, and I think people need to be educated that like you have pointed out to us, USDA, uh, in other words, we cannot do an ordinance banning a particular product because um, USDA laws supersede. In other words, if we were to pass an ordinance 
it would be thrown out. But there is this huge um, campaign to uh, ban a glycophosphate um, that's circulating in Taos on Facebook, and somebody needs to maybe educate these people that unfortunately our hands are tied. <coughs> Mr. Chair, thank you, Commissioner Gunnell. Absolutely correct. Education for appropriate use and hoped for elimination and jurisdictional issues all come into play here. And we are, the state is, and this is probably, as I think about it, going to be DOT's bubble. Let's let <laughs> Susan and Stephen figure that out, but we're, we're going to have issues there. So we cannot outright ban. What we can do is limit our own property use so the town can limit and have a policy like this so the county can. So we're doing what we can. Third, Mr. Chair, pending your approval, there are uh, two discrepancies, or not discrepancies, but maybe um, disconnects between town and county policy pending your approval. I'd just like to point them out to the commission uh, just so that you're aware and then you'll take it from there. Please. Thank you, sir. So, uh, section 4.4 of the county's version uh, ends at that sentence, non-target organisms in the environment. The town goes on to, on to state that it will list the materials used and its citizens will be able to consult with the website or call the clerk's office to determine what has been used and, and perhaps follow up with labeling. That, that statement, not in in the town's version, but not in the county's 4.4, is kind of referred to in section five down below, where uh, public works is encouraged to maintain an inventory of pesticides. Uh, we in the town maybe have an easier battle with this because we're centralized. Whereas in the county, I don't know how many square miles are in the county, but I imagine you have facilities, departments in Pena and up in Cuesta and so on. So, it may be hard, but I just thought I'd point out to the commission that you may want to have some kind of accountability measure so that a citizen can access that, as opposed to calling in the general number and then getting the Andros office, and the Andros trying to track down public works and so on. So just something for your consideration. The other item where town and county differ, uh, the regards signage, the town will put up signs one day prior, the county wants to do three. I don't think either one of these are major issues, they're hiccups. And given your organizational structure and the huge amount of territory you have to cover, I can understand why there may be issues with uh, accountability measures and certainly the three-day notice. So, uh, those are the only two things. I do want to thank Ms. Baker. I want to thank also the Extension Service. JJ's in the back here. But uh, Tony Valdez and uh, Stephen B. Hill, was it, Susan, who we worked a lot with last week. I want to thank you all. I want to thank our council and mayor. Appreciate all your efforts. And I'd like to thank all of you. Um, you've given me really important feedback. and stayed very well, so appreciate it. Now, when I'm done, uh, once we have a unified ordinance, um, we can really get serious in talking with Stephen down at the Extension Service about remaining issues like signage. Uh, it'd be good to have unified signage. We haven't finished that out, and I'm going to guess the Department of Heads and Stephen can work that out, but we still need to do that. Even more importantly are the QR codes, and I'm not Mr. Technological, but QR code is a basic USDA, correct me, JJ, if I'm wrong, qualifier on each product and uh, without bias so that a consumer uh, will know what they're purchasing. Uh, uh, Sean Walker at, at Rio Grande Ace is going to lead up the outreach effort there. So that's the second huge initiative. And then the third thing is we would like to coordinate with Leandro and Edward here and our PW over there uh, a drop off day to help create awareness or so the extension service can you know bring up some kind of really cool looking pesticide thing and we can make a big deal out of it. So the committee is really active, it's not going away. Um, there's lots of follow-up to be done. We need to make sure the town you know adheres to what it's agreed to and so on. So 
as well as the county. We're partners in, in this endeavor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Chairman, could someone clarify on number five? It says public works. Uh, should we include uh, public facilities as well? Or is that encompassing public works as road, well, correct? So public facilities, the public works and public facilities departments are encouraged. Chairman and Commissioners, I think adding both would be a good idea. Um, thank you for that comment. And may I respond to some of the comments? Um, sure. On the 4.4 suggestion um, posted on the website, that's a great suggestion. I think that's probably down the road for us as we upgrade our website. Um, and I think we could come back and create that policy. It might be difficult right now on a practical level. Um, as far as Section 5 is concerned, um, that encouraged could be changed to a well. The commissioners would like that to become a, a mandatory requirement. Uh, again, it creates more liability potentially on, on the part of the county if we don't keep an accurate inventory, but certainly will um, would strongly uh, require us to do that. And then on the signage, uh, we decided three days prior just to give the public adequate notice if they're out of sight and maybe don't come back for a few days. We thought three days was better than one. But I'll defer to the county manager on any of these in terms of um, the practicality or the level of staff needed to carry it out. Mr. Vice Chair, I think on the website, I mean, we can do our best to accommodate that, but to make it a requirement, as mentioned from Quest out of Vinasco, a lot of times vegetation is a liability for the county, and if it's identified, it should be taken care of as soon as possible um, to minimize our liability. So I think um, we could do our best to get on the website, but to make it mandatory at this time until it's easier for all outlying sites to be able to do that. Um, and then adding facilities I don't see as a problem um, to number five. Any other comments, commissioners? I do. I do agree. Um, and then the signage, because you are uh, going into areas that are further out, outlying areas, as opposed to everything centralized in the town and house, it does give staff the opportunity to get out there, take care of business, and not have to be so much travel time to take down a sign and put it back up. And, and the short window gives us three days as beneficial and helps prepare and plan when they get out there in the fields. And gives the public enough time to do whatever they need to do in that area prior to putting the, the uh, pesticides down on the ground so it does help. So, the pleasure of the commission to hear a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve <laughs> resolution number 2017 32, a resolution by the Towson County Board of Commissioners adopting the implementation, implementation of an integrated pest management with the addition of several words in um, item five that says the public works and, fac and facilities departments are encouraged. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Martinez. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner O'Donnell? Yes. Commissioner Leighton? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Gregor? Yes. All right. Thank you guys for your, all your hard work and uh, we'll see how it goes. Happy, happy little week. Get gloves and uh, good old fashioned way, yes. <laughs> right. Next item is resolution number 2017 33. It's a resolution authorizing and directing the publication of the title. General summary and time date meeting place for discussion, consideration, and action upon proposed ordinance 2017 3 ordinance authorizing the operation of uh, recreation off highway vehicle, all train vehicles on paved streets owned and controlled by County of Taos, Sheriff Holden. Good morning. Good morning. I think we've discussed this in past meetings. Uh, I guess this is the next step for the actual advertisement. Uh, I have not had an opportunity to meet with Susan, nor received any uh, updated, changed, or proposed uh, changes to the ordinance draft that I have done. So I'm a little bit unprepared to address uh, 
questions, perhaps, Susan, is if she's had an opportunity to do that yet. But I do think uh, the next step uh, is certainly in line. Let's move forward and uh, be my recommendation. Um, Chairman, commissioners, Sheriff, we will use the same format you saw before, but the sheriff and I spoke, and we'll allow the minimum age to become 16 from 18 for allowed use of an all-terrain OHV on paved roads within the county. And the minimum speed limit in the format you saw was 40 miles an hour. We decided in talking that that's probably too high. Um, that's where there's no posted speed limit, and as we all know, there are many paved county roads that don't have a posted speed limit. And our discussion was to bring that down to 30 miles an hour. And the speaker is great to discuss this, but I have and, and the rest of the document will remain the same. Any comments, commissioners? Motion to approve. Motion to be made by Commissioner Blankenhorn. Do I have a second? I'll go ahead and second. Second by Council Romero. Any discussions? Hearing none, Commissioner Martinez, please call me. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner <coughs> Yes. Commissioner Langham? Yes. Secretary Geiger? Yes. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Next item is resolution, eyes item C, is resolution 2017-34, a resolution imposing a medical tax for the benefit of a puddle of water and sanitation issues. Mr. Chairman, is this basically a uh, a continuation? Yes, so Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, this is essentially what you saw last meeting from the Valle de Franchos. Um, it is authorizing the continuation of the Avalora property tax. Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Motion be made by Commissioner Romero, by Mary Second. Second. Commissioner Blankenhorn. Any discussion? Hearing none. We're call roll. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn? Yes. Yes. Next is D, Resolution 217-35, Resolution of the Mexico Association of Counties, 217-2018 Wildfire Risk Reduction Grant Funds, Title 2017 Penasco Valley CWPT Update. Mr. Sanchez, Chief Planner, are you doing your term, Commissioners? Um, yes, we received $15,000 to update the current Penasco Valley CWPT plan. Um, we plan including working with people used to include them in this plan and also uh, probably the land grab people that are located in that area and with possibly the community of concrete. Um, we'll be working with the um, finance department to come up with uh, either updating our movie coordinators contract or RFP for this uh, to create a contract with person to update this document. I stand for any questions. Commissioner Dunn. Uh, thank you very much for bringing this forward. My only question is, when you're looking at the Pinasco area, what are the high risk uh, areas, Ojitos, um, um, Zipa Pool, if you could kind of list where um, the fire danger is. Um, uh, Ferris Ritos, Sipapu, uh, Las Trampas, Chamisal, and then Fire or Pico are the areas that we have high risk. Thank you. Considered as high risk areas. Any further questions for Mr. Sanchez? To take a motion to approve Resolution 217 35. So moved. I'll second. Motion to be made by. Commissioner Blanken, our second Commissioner Romero. Clerk, call roll. Commissioner Romero. Yes. Commissioner Romero. Yes. Commissioner Blanken. Yes. 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 Thank you, Nathan. You're welcome. Next item is item 11, contracts, agreements, and MOU to bids. This is a discussion and considerations that require the following. Item A is approval amendment, renewal one, contract TCC 216 between House County and the Village of Angel Fire, Mr. Martinez. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners. That's exactly what I'm here for, uh, seeking approval of our first annual renewal um, of three to continue dispatching for the Village of Angel Fire. I stand for questions. Seeking approval 
by, by you all here, so then I can go over and get their approval. Mr. Blake, Thanks, Eric. So you guys really shot a 56 in that tournament, is that true? <laughs> Which one are you talking about? <laughs> Correct. Nice job. Thank you. No further questions. <laughs> okay, that's fine. There, there's a lot of questions about a lot of this actually for that. Um, any other comments for Mr. questions for Mr. Martinez? Hearing none, entertain a motion. So moved. Motion be made by Commissioner Blankenhorn by your second. I'll second Mr. Sherman. Thank you, Councilman Romero. Fair call roll. Commissioner. Oh. Commissioner. Did I say Councilman? Yes. Did I? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Commissioner. I'm stuck here. Have a meeting tonight, too, so I'm practicing. Commissioner Romero. Yes. Commissioner Romero. Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is item B, the approval of a memorandum of the understanding between Taos County and the Village of Cuesta for the ambulance EMS services. Mr. Cordell. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, this is also a continuation of an agreement we had with the Village last year um, where the Village is providing uh, some ambulance uh, response for part of Northern Taos County. And, uh, nothing has changed from the prior year. Is that for your question? Move to approve. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion be made by Commissioner Blankenhorn, seconded by Commissioner Romero. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner Adams? Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn? Yes. Vice Chair Agus? I will recuse myself from the vote. Thank you. Next item is item C. This is the approval of aging and long term service department of intergovernmental agreement, number 18. That's 624 4000 Do we have uh, Mr. Trujillo or is this going to be kind of uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll make an attempt to present on this. Uh, it's basically in the money we get directly from aging and long term services. It's a combination of federal and state grants. Um, the total amount is not to exceed $210,000 and the use is uh, primarily for the uh, foster grandparent and senior companion programs. I stand for any other questions, I'll do my best to answer. Um, just one more thing to mention, it has been reviewed by the finance department um, and it is part of what we have budgeted for the upcoming year. Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion should be made by Commissioner Romero, second by Commissioner O'Donnell. Clerk, call the vote. Commissioner Romero. Yes. Commissioner O'Donnell. Yes. 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 Next is item D, the approval of a contract between Taos County and Taos Pueblo for detainee confinement. Mr. Abeka is here. Answer any questions. So, so again, uh, upon my appointment, uh, I was asked some questions to see what, if I would take into consideration uh, a contract with uh, our neighboring Taos Pueblo. Uh, the reason being is that uh, their facility was pretty much outdated. Uh, they were looking at closing it down. Uh, the facility basically consisted of uh, two rooms with bunks, and uh, that was their jail. Uh, so, you know, as I looked into this, you know, there was a lot of question in my mind. But, uh, you know, I had to pretty much uh, stipulate basically what it was that the, the contract had to meet. Um, as a result of that, um, we went back and forth and we came to the conclusion. So, therefore, uh, we went ahead and we got the contract. It's, it's been signed off on. And uh, as of June 30th, the contract is going to be uh, applicable to our facility. There has been question, you know, in the past because of uh, occupancy and bed space availability, and you know, we basically spelled it out in the contract that if our facility uh, is to capacity or close to capacity, we're going to keep those beds for our county. Um, if 
our population is manageable, we're of course going to be that uh, that friendly neighbor. We're going to go ahead and accept these people. Um, you know, we did uh, stipulate in the contract that uh, if uh, if an inmate or detainee that is being brought in from the pueblo, uh, you know, they're going to have to meet the criteria. They're going to have to be able to. And I'll just say this. If you can't walk in and you have to be carried in, I'm not going to accept you. If you uh, come into our facility and you can't answer, answer our screening questions, we're not going to accept you. So, uh, you know, Chief Left Hand to uh, Taos Pueblo at the time, uh, we went ahead and we uh, met, we made it very clear, we met with uh, the judge from the, from the tribal, and uh, I just let him know that Taos County will not be liable. Uh, but what will happen if we have to send somebody out to the facility, to the Holy Cross Hospital, uh, we will immediately notify at which time they will provide uh, staffing to oversee that person. But I also made it very clear that, you know, if they can't meet those criteria that I just spoke about, uh, we will not accept it. Cal's County will not be held liable for this. Uh, we will fulfill our obligations of the contractor and our responsibilities. Um, but uh, again, uh, we're, we're just trying to be that, that friendly neighbor and help out Taos Pueblo because they do not have a facility. The contract also uh, uh, reads that uh, we are not long-term housing for Taos Pueblo. Uh, and uh, it's, it's in black and white. And after 30 days, they will have to send them out to Southern U, which is uh, uh, down by Farmington. Uh, that's where they have their facility. Uh, they actually have agreed that you know even if uh, they're going to if they're going to have somebody here for two weeks, they'd probably rather send them out. So uh, what uh, I anticipate is we're going to be a holding facility. Uh, we're going to charge these individuals from day one. Uh, the contract actually reads that uh, we will be billing $100 per day. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman thank you, Chairman. Uh, good contract, good plan, thank you. Uh, the rules for admission sound like the same ones we have at the homeless shelter. It's uh, correct. It's why we need uh, some detox beds. Anyway, thank you for the contract. You're welcome. Anything else? Commissioner, um, Commissioner O'Donnell. Just a quick question. How many house public detainees do we get a year on average? Right now, uh, we don't house for Taos Pueblo. Okay. Uh, we do have the detainees that are actually natives from Taos Pueblo, but they are here on magistrate cases. So uh, again, we do manage them. Uh, but they are Cal's County cases, or municipal, should I say. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, she asked the question I was going to ask, but also in addition to that, um, with these individuals detained by our sheriff, our state police, or the town, or the tribe, or are they they're primarily from the tribe itself? Primarily from the tribe. Now, as I mentioned, you know, we do have district cases of district. We do have natives already that have district warrants, magistrate warrants, or municipal. Uh, if they're caught within the city limits or within Taos County, and they are detained by either state police, sheriff's department, or city police, they will be brought in by them. But we need to understand that they're under Cowes County uh, warrants or district warrants. Now, uh, anything that falls from the Pueblo side, those are Cowes Pueblo inmates. Those are the people that we will bill for. So, Mr. Chairman, at what time, at what point does this uh, contract for detaining or confinement apply? Only when these individuals are brought in from Taos Pueblo directly? Or Correct. Okay. Correct. If an individual that is from Taos Pueblo, but he was brought in by the town of Taos Police, does this contract apply? So, no. Uh, 
uh, because they're brought in by our own arsons. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, I definitely want to thank Ms. Robinson for her work on this. Um, it was prior to Mr. Abeta's time here that we've been working on this. We've been through two governors and about almost a two-year process to get this completed. And I want to also thank the Pueblo for working with us on this. So, so I just wanted to put those thanks out there really long. Thank you. Okay. There's no other questions for Mr. Abeta. Do I have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. We'll see. Second. Motion to be by Commissioner Romero, second by Commissioner Menkenhorn. No further discussion. Uh, for call Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner Menkenhorn? Yes. Commissioner Menkenhorn? Yes. yes. So basically, stay right there. Next one is uh, amendment and approval, renewal. Right? Yeah. To contract PCC 216 039, a contract between Towns County and Correctional Health Partners, LLC. So yes, uh, as we know, we have uh, our medical provider, uh, their uh, Correctional Health Partners, they are located based out of uh, Denver, Colorado. Um, again, upon my appointment to Towns County, I was kind of hit with all these different uh, contracts. This is uh, year one, I believe, renewal. Correct. Uh, so uh, we did a lot of negotiating with uh, correctional health partners, and you know our main objective was to see if we could at least get uh, uh, somewhat of a flat rate as we actually had for this past year. Uh, but because of the contract, the contract act reflects a three percent increase from. Uh, their side of correctional health partners. Myself, uh, the county manager, Leandro uh, Cordova, we, we had a phone conference with them, and not only that, but I've actually met with them in person. They've come down here, and we, we tried to negotiate that 3%. Um, we were successful in negotiating 0.5%, so as to the 3%, we are now just paying 2.5. We were hoping to see if we could at least meet them, you know, if they would meet us halfway at 1.5. 1. 1. Uh, I think that we still are probably going to talk about this uh, in the future. Um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, Correctional Health Partners, they, they provide service to our facility uh, 12 hours on site. 12 hours on call. Uh, we have an RN. We have uh, our uh, provider, which is uh, Steve Carver. We have now we have a psychiatrist on board that comes in for four hours uh, per month and also does an additional uh, eight, four to eight hours of tele, uh, like telesite. We actually have a mental health uh, person uh, that is on board for 12 hours a week, which is, break, the breakdown is four hours for three days. Uh, so we're very fortunate to have what we have. You know, uh, I spoke with many other facilities throughout the state, and uh, they just don't have it. Uh, so again, you know, I think by having RNs, your physician's assistants, <coughs> having mental health, psychiatrists, that kind of keeps us out of the loop from tort claims. You know, I, I kind of refer to tort claims all the time, but I, I can say that in our past year, uh, with correctional health partners, you know, although they are, you know, it, it is a very pricey amount that we spend, but we haven't had to deal with any tort claims, uh, and I think that's a direct result and direct reflection of having these people on site. Uh, there always has been questions to certain things, but we have, we, we, we met and we've come to agreement on a lot of things. Um, I wish we could have met half ways. I know that we are in a flat based budget and, and uh, because of that, you know, to me it is concerning that we're paying that much more. I think, uh, I, I had a number and I, I, it's, I believe that uh, it came out to 17,000 and some odd, you know, dollars more 
this renewal year, as opposed to I believe it would have been nineteen thousand or twenty thousand. Commissioner, thank you. And Tim, do we have any idea how we compare in cost to other uh, similar counties on health and um, Mr. Chairman, I I kind of looked at some of the other counties. I know our closest neighbor, uh, Rio Viva, doesn't have a provider in house, and therefore they pay a lot of money on the back end, taking people to the emergency room and responding on the back end. And their the cost for that type of response is a lot greater than what we're paying. Um, it is. It's become a very major budgetary issue for them. So um, having a large contract in place does give us, at least as Mr. Abeka mentioned, the peace of mind of better service. Uh, we do have that. And we have actually been complimented in the last year. A lot of compliments over the week, um, last week, about how things are going over here at our detention center. It was a huge expense. I'll tell you that our previous provider um, seems to be serving less and less of the county jails. And this provider may gain some ground in northern New Mexico because of the services they provided for cows. So it's an expensive contract. Every county in the state is facing that same expense. We're all dealing with the same issues. And healthcare is important to the facility. Uh, but we've taken it a little further with the behavioral health and the mental health. Um, as Mr. Baker mentioned, having a psychiatrist on staff is a big <coughs> movement. It's a big regression for us, and, and it's something we haven't had in the past. And it, it's a start. We're still working on it. also the outside programs and the wraparound stuff, and with Ms. Adonio and the healthcare assistance programs. So. Well, I know that it's more than we used to pay, but I think it's an uh, important commitment that we're making, and uh, I'm, I'm proud of us doing that. So. Right, and, and you know, my numbers are wrong. The, the 2.5 was 13,406. Uh, the 3% was 13,655. So I apologize for that. Thank you. So could you give us a synopsis of what has changed in this contract, the 2.5? Anything else changed in this contract compared to last year? There has really been no changes, none whatsoever, other than that the initial contract reflects that year one will be a 3% increase. And uh, just to add to that, the scope of work is the same as the original contract. Yes. So, Mr. Chairman, um, this on site on page 7 to 14. So the one, it's always been the on-site four hours per day, three days a week for mental health. Is it possible for the future we could see if they could raise that amount of mental health services? Right, and uh, Commissioner Donald, that is one thing that uh, I had requested. Uh, I had actually requested to see if we could have at least an additional four hours uh, which would give us another day. Uh, that is something that I continue to, you know, uh, I'm not closing, you know, the, the doors on this, and I do want to see if we can move forward with it. And I think that, you know, we just needed to get the contract. I think that eventually, if everything goes as planned, I think we might be able to get the four additional hours. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner O'Donnell, to help answer that as well, when we entered into the contract last year, they could not find that provider for a few months, so we were getting a credit or a discount on the contract. Uh, at one point, they asked if we would be willing to just kind of let that go and continue with the discounted rate, and we did not. Mr. Rabita and myself felt that very, it was very important to make sure that those were available to the detainees and the facilitable services. And so we are getting that at this point, and we are paying for it. And because of the escalator, it is a little difficult for us to add more at this time um, until we really know what it's next year's going to look like in the overall budget. And then, um, Mr. Chairman, um, page 10 of 14, 19, where uh, have we done the uh, computer backup system? Tech contractor shows us county create and operate a backup system for all computer-based records. They actually haven't. That's something that uh, they are working on. Okay. 
because um, at some point I'd like to see stats like you know they're supposed to give glasses how many glasses did they give out how many people did they um, just data right. I'd like to see data that I think it's important to hold them accountable for their services so I don't know how you do that. So, it sounds like the backup computer might help, but so actually, Commissioner Ronald, there is a, there is worksheets that uh, correctional health partners they do provide to us uh, to include, you know, and I will say, you know, to indigent services, you know, I think that we've moved a mountain, and uh, now we have uh, indigent services on board. Uh, just for example, this past month based on all the documentation and the tracking that's being developed, uh, Indigent Services was able to pay $27,000 for this month, which really helps out. Uh, again, you know, uh, I just say kudos to uh, Ms. Jaramillo and to Christy, who are working diligently with uh, Indigent. Uh, I know that we've had to go through hurdles and whatnot, but it, it does seem like we have pretty much come to the point where documentation is being generated, it's being submitted. Uh, if we need additional documentation, uh, we have uh, met with correctional health partners and they basically know that they need to provide it. They provide it in a graph. So therefore, do we have it? Yes, we already have working documents that basically specify what we're getting billed for. If we have one detainee going into, uh, let's just say for uh, follow-up through medical services there, all that is being documented. If we have detainees going out to outside medical appointments, hospital, or just uh, specialist appointments, all that is documented. So if we need tracking, it's there, it's available. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, they're working on the electronic filing systems and whatnot, but we do have backup documentation that's generated electronically through CHP. And Mr. Chairman, to kind of expand on that, um, as mentioned, Ms. Jaramillo has been asking for the same backup document for a long time, and it turns out there was a mis there was a confusion as to whether Ms. Jaramillo actually worked for the county. And so HIPAA is huge for correctional health partners. That's a major standard for them to take into consideration. Now that they're comfortable with Ms. Jaramillo working for the county, they have no problem sharing the documentation that they should have shared all along um, that we need for our added trail on the healthcare assistance side of things. So documentation has improved tremendously. However, there's still a lot of concern about sharing. So it's basically going in and looking at the raw numbers you want to see and see how we can extrapolate that for you know informational purposes without violating the law. So that would be, I hear they give you timesheets, but do we have a do they have an electronic system that they can punch in that takes the names out so we can see the stats of how many people are truly getting mental health, how many are going to the hospital, how many are all these different components of the contract? Yes, they do. They do, okay. They do. Uh, and again, as the county manager uh, stated, is you know, these HIPAA is a big thing with correctional health partners. Uh, they, they know that the, the files belong to us, but it's just a big thing, you know, who are they going to? Uh, there is, we could ask them today to generate, we, we need documentation, and we can have that probably within the same day. So at some point, if I would like to see this data. Right. Maybe next fiscal year end, whenever is appropriate, and then in addition, the mental health assessment forms that CHP uses, and it says in the contract that they'll train you and you'll use CHP mental health assessment forms. I'm still going to ask that you uh, look up SAMHSA's mental health assessment forms and see if they conform, because the last I checked, I think CHP's mental health assessment forms uh, could be improved. But once I compared their mental health assessment forms to what SAMHSA 
uh, best standard practices. Um, and so I would really like to see if there was a way you could work with CHP to incorporate SAMHSA's forms rather than using uh, the ones they currently have, which are limited. I would really appreciate that. Is that correct? And that'll be the uh, discussion that we'll hold with CHP. And I, I can go through my emails and find the SAMHSA mental health question and compare it to CHP. And it's a little more detailed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. No other questions or comments. So, I, I, are you clear with what has been requested? I think that you already have some of those things in order, whether they're documented on paper or they got to be electronically. I just don't want to see you have to try and work five times over. As long as there's some accountability through the contract, they should be providing that information at any time that we need it within right. 24, 48 hours. It's there. Right. And I, I, do, I do appreciate that the Commissioner Donald wants to make sure that they have that tracked. But, right. you know, I don't think we need to sit in the storage room and smoke cigars trying to read up on how many people got glasses and of course whatnot. Well, as long as that's documented, we're ready to go. I, I think that's fair. And I believe that's fair. You know, I believe, uh, you know, as the county manager said, you know, the, the predecessor, uh, I'm not familiar with, but there was a lot of, there was a lot of question, a lot of doubt, a lot of hiccups, and a lot of court uh, I think that with the contractor that we have now, uh, they're very professional. They're very professional and they take their job very seriously. Uh, when we request meetings, uh, they will definitely come down from Denver. Uh, they won't hesitate. We will meet and there will always be a resolution to the meeting. Right. I think that's, that's important because then we can hold them accountable to their contract and that's what we want to do is have all these things in order for what we request, that they have it documented somewhere, filed electronically or hard copy. Okay. Uh, any, any other discussion? If not, you're asking for a motion. So, so moved, Chairman. I'll go ahead and second, Mr. Chairman. Motion be made by Commissioner Blankenhorn, second by Commissioner Romero. Clerk, please make roll call. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner Adamo? Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn? Yes. Vice Chair Agnes? Yes. Next item. Thank you, Mr. Victor. Could, could I just ask one? Who um, is in charge of um, make, monitoring the contract and making sure they comply? Is it the manager? Is it you? Is it Ms. Harmeal? So I, I will say that I think all three of us, uh, uh, Ms. Harmeal, uh, she is a very big role player in this. Uh, she knows the contracts inside and out. Uh, whenever something is not going the way it should, she'll always pull me in, you know, we'll meet, and we'll have this meeting, all three of us, if we have to meet with the, with the correctional health partners, we will definitely not hesitate, and they will come back. Very well, thank you, Ms. Romeo. Thank you. Next item is approval amendment, renewal one contract PCC 2016-39, Contract between Towns County, oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm trying to have Herbert do more work. <laughs> <laughs> but I discussed it uh, I looked up here on the screen, my bad. So this is the approval grant agreement number 18, BG30, funding for key Towns County DWI program, staff and operational costs for fiscal year 18. Mr. Valdez. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, uh, commissioners. Um, I'm here to uh, present the uh, grant agreement for fiscal year 18. Um, uh, you guys have the, uh, the documentation there, and um, all I did is approval. I did, a pre I did present everything when we did the grant uh, application back earlier on this year, and now all we have is the grant agreement uh, for your approval. Questions, Mr. Williams. Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion has been made by Commissioner Romero, second by Commissioner Blankenhorn. No other discussion. Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Romero. Yes. Commissioner Donald. Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn. Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.
Next item is approval award for RFP 217-04. Charles County Adult and Juvenile Detention Meal and Commissary Service, Ms. B. Hill. Uh, good morning, Chair and Commission. Good morning. Before you, I have a staff recommendation. Um, we received only one responsive uh, response for this RFP, which is Southern Food Services, which we currently have a contract with to provide services for the facility, the detention facility. Um, this was evaluated by the committee. There was a, a little bit of a uh, concern about pricing that was actually uh, brought forth to us in the original packet. So the contractor was actually contacted and, and we discussed uh, laying a note. Of course, we're having a flat budget here and that any increase would actually uh, kind of put the, the detention center in, in a big bind budget wise. So they were able to work with us, not just on the menus, but on the pricing index as well, with the commissary services provided. And um, we were able to come to an agreement and they pretty much brought it down to almost what we're paying currently right now. So we were able to negotiate it back down um, as close as possible. I think maybe it's a cent more per meal than we anticipated, but it's better than seven to eight cents more per meal, especially with uh, the average of detainees we have in the facility. Um, based on the review of the RFP, the Evaluation Committee recommends to an award RFP 2017-04 for the Taos County Adult Juvenile Detention Meal and Commissary Services to Summon Home Services subject to negotiations of a mutually agreeable contract respectfully. Any questions for Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman, is the, the phone service that rolled into this contract? Uh, the phone service still, still will exist in terms of the commissary side of it, yes. I've just heard complaints that that phone cost is really high for inmates. Oh, are you talking about actual phone costs where they call out to the yeah. inmate? No, this is so totally separate from that. That's a different service provided. Okay. And that's actually uh, regulated by the PRC okay. in terms of cost. Any, other, any questions for Ms. Leo? Hearing none, can you take a motion? So moved. Motion be made by Commissioner Blanket Horn on your side. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Commissioner Romero. Any discussion? Hearing none, it's working to call roll. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Next item is approval award for RFP 217-06, Medical and Social Outreach Services for Towson County. Ms. Vito. Um, here before you, we have a staff recommendation. We received five responses to our published RFP 2017-06. Out of the five responses, um, after the evaluation committee uh, reviewed and also requested interviews with each um, vendor or firm that was offering their services, um, based on that, they recommend to award RFP 2017-06 for medical and social outreach services to the Taos Coalition to End Homelessness, um, Heart of Taos, Community Against Violence and Las Cunas Community Centers, uh, subject to negotiations of a mutual agreeable contract, respectfully. <coughs> so they decided to award based on the four top um, scoring uh, vendors out there. And of course, attached to it is the Evaluation Committee Summary Report, which explains um, how each one took place in, in the committee's um, concerns and their comments. Any questions for Ms. Leo? I just have a comment after reviewing this. There's a lot of talk in here about accurate uh, record keeping and uh, documentation of services. And is there a way that the county could get everybody on one system of reporting like if there's a way to look for some kind of software program that's uniform, um, you know, I see CAB is, you know, has a probably have a has a good program. Los Cumbre says they do electronic uh, medical records for their documentation. I'm not sure about the Taos, but I I just see this kind of recurring theme. Um, even the coalition to. Uh, 
and homelessness, um, says the monitoring and evaluation was decent. But it seems like, is there a way we can, we can recommend a software or provide a reporting software to, to uh, make sure we have the right documentation? Uh, Chairman, Commissioner, uh, currently we do have three contracts and those, con uh, those three entities did report um, basically similar ways. They use the same format. Um, of course, they deliver different services, so the reporting will be slightly different. But they do use the same format. Okay, so you're happy with their software or the way they're reporting their documentation? Um, Chairman, Commissioner, um, to request an entity to use a certain software, it would probably cost them additional monies, and you know, money is hard to come by right now. So I think the format that we currently have works. Okay, and then this one that was rejected, um, you anticipate they will get certified uh, under Medicaid and Medicare? says they are unable to process claims due to their certification not being approved as of yet. I mean, I would like to see this come back because uh, this is kind of in line with what we're trying to do. Chairman, Commissioner, um, currently they're not um, certified and my understanding is that um, this entity has looked out for grants and for some of the grants they were seeking they have to actually be doing the programming before they can actually get certified through Medicaid. That's my understanding. What kind of programming are we talking about? Um, I'm not sure, Commissioner. Um, it's just that this, you know, I'd like to see them come back because they are attempting to do mental health in rural areas. Um, and that's something what we really need right now. So. Um, I don't know if you could maybe find out what they what they need to do. Um, are they actually functioning? Are they actually is this group functioning? Chairman, uh, Commissioner, um, this is a whole new program that would be implemented from the ground up. I think you could take a chance of a system or find out what steps you need to get to it and be certified. But, uh, if that's a recommendation, consideration to move forward with Commissioner Dow. Are they asking for startup money? How much do they ask for? Uh, Chairman, um, Commissioner, it was $224,386. Well, Maybe that's something we might consider in the future when we start doing economic development. Um, Chairman, uh, Commissioner, I will state that um, the numbers also with um, their cost analysis on the employees, um, the employees were pretty at the low end and the executive director was at the high end. So there was a concern in regards to that. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we're going on to the next item, correct? Uh, right? No, not yet. Oh, have a good day. I, I, I do just want to bring one, one thing to my, um, and I was just out of courtesy to ask Mr. Blankenhorn to abstain due to he is a board member for the home. <coughs> Good idea. Good idea. So we'll a motion. So I need a motion to approve the award of that RFP. Move, move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion has been made by Commissioner Romero, second by Commissioner O'Donnell. If there's no further discussion, please call the roll. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner O'Donnell? Yes. Commissioner Blakenhurst? And of course I will abstain because of my involvement in the men's shelter. Thank you. Commissioner I will also vote yes. <laughs> Next item is approval of an award for RFP 2017-7, Medical Director of Taos County IMS and the Taos Central Dispatch E91 Mississippi Bill. 
Uh, Chairman Commission, before you as a staff recommendation, we received one response to our published RFP 2017-07 for the medical director for Taos County Fire EMS and Taos Central Dispatch E911. Um, the offer who responded was UNM EMS um, Consortium. Um, they recommended in the packet to actually have uh, Dr. Douglas Dixon um, be the assigned position up here um, as our medical director. Um, after the evaluation committee reviewed uh, the actual RFP packet, there was a little bit of a clarification that needed in terms of the scheduling as well as uh, some negotiation for pricing. It came in pretty high, way over budget. And after uh, talking with UNM and working with them hand in hand, they were able to uh, uh, bring down the price to meet our budget constraints as well as um, work with us in terms of the services that they provide. They did mention that Dr. Dixon does work part-time at Holy Cross Hospital. He's very familiar with the area, very familiar with um, the whole process up here in Taos County, so they felt he was a better fit, but of course if he's not available, they have other physicians on staff who do cover in, in the case that he's not around. So based on the review of the RFP, the evaluation committee recommends to an award uh, for RFP 2017-07 for medical director for Taos County Fire EMS and Taos Central Dispatch E911 to UNM EMS Consortium for Dr. Douglas Dixon subject to negotiations of a mutually agreeable contract respectfully. Questions for Ms. Lee? Could you take a motion? Move to approve. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion to be made by Commissioner Blankenhorn, seconded by Commissioner Romero. If there's no other further discussions, Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner Donald? Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn? Yes. Commissioner Gregor? Yes. Next item is item J. It's approval award RFP 2017 08. 08, the Towns County Community Custody Program. Chairman of the Commission, before you use that recommendation um, for RFP 2017-08, we received two responses um, for this RFP. The two who responded was Human Resource Development Associates, HRDA, and Advenos Monitoring and Tracking Systems, EMTZ. Um, after um, having this evaluated by our committee, they, they took quite a while. They reviewed the packets and had quite a bit to say. Um, but based on the recommendation and on the scoring that was given, um, the, the actual evaluation committee recommends to award RFP 2017-08 Health County Community Custody Program to HRDA, subject to negotiations on a mutually agreeable contract. I don't know if there's any questions in regards to this or not. Why? Well, I'm going to have right um, to stay from this, but I want to know why um, you've done this. Uh, this one in particular? Mm -hmm. um, there, there were some concerns in terms of pricing and so forth um, that was coming around in the invoicing, but also to, um, uh, it's my understanding that uh, we were trying to hopefully get some more uh, entities in the door that may or may not possibly be, you know, located in Taos County to provide these services. So I don't know if there's anything on this court that I would like to add. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, we did get a little bit above the normal budget of this year, and it's always to the best interest of the county to see what our options are out there and if we can negotiate a better price and benefit to the taxpayer of Taos County. That was really the underlying issue that I saw it, so to go out to RP again. Um, will they be available on weekends 24 7 and they have the same type of system? I know I've heard several judges not be too happy with their availability on weekends and so um, and some other issues in the past when this was a company for 25 years that worked at the county so um, I just question I wonder what's really going on here um, where does it say uh, 24 coverage on call because this was a common complaint among judges that they were not uh, present for getting people out of jail and servicing them that they get stuck in jail and it adds, adds to our cost uh, because they're not around and so uh, what's what's it say the basically the HRDA packet 
uh, stated that they will commit um, 8 to 5 Monday through Friday. And then they have an on-call schedule. Right now, they actually have a team of four or five people. Um, they listed them within the packet. Um, that will be available. They have an on-call uh, schedule that they will be providing. They have an on-call service where if that's needed, there's going to be somebody available. I know that was an issue that was brought up by the evaluation committee um, and also uh, other areas before the RFP went out. Um, but it was it's a common complaint between both um, both firms that actually participated. It's not just HRDA, but I've also heard other various complaints on the other side due to the lack of personnel as well. Um, the biggest key, I think, for the evaluation committee when this was um, actually reviewed is the actual uh, pre-trial services package that is actually um, HRDA is already implemented um, within the judicial system, I guess, when they do go through the whole process with the judge. And that's something that's crucial, um, whether or not this individual should be either incarcerated or, or held in the detention center, or whether they should actually have ankle monitoring and won't be um, in any way, shape, or form um, a danger to the public. So um, there was a lot of different views from these evaluators that and they totally you know, did express the same concerns you're, you're um, stating, Commissioner Obama. But um, based on the packet, it, it, it appears that HRDA is actually putting an on-call schedule and actually you're going to have five staff members available for that for the holidays, off hours, and as, as well as weekends to cover those areas. But it also depends, too, on the detainee, um, whether or not they do have the funds to actually do the initial setup fee. Um, that is their responsibility. It's not Taos County to do this contract. We are only responsible for the fees that are um, actually charged per week to have that ankle monitor on until a court order is telling them to have it removed. But in terms of the initial setup, the amount it is up to the detainee to pay that up front to the vendor to get that started up. So those are just some of the concerns that they did bring up with that maybe possibility why some of them don't get out of jail by Monday because maybe they don't have the fees to get the ankle monitor on at that time. So I just want to say, Mr. Chairman, this is reeks of a political setup here. And uh, I talked to judges about HDRA and, and they're the counting the county's invoices. So, but I won't be voting, so. Okay, well, so you're not going to be voting, that's okay. Um, do you have any other questions for Ms. Dino? No, actually, I just wanted to thank her, and if I'm in order to make a motion to approve. You are in order for a motion? And that is by Commissioner Blanky, or do I hear a second? I can make a second. I will second that motion. Ms. Uh, Martinez, please call. Oh. Commissioner Romero? No. Commissioner O'Donnell? Staying. Commissioner Blankenhart? Yes. Vice Chair Guidance? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We can take a five minute break from the restroom, water, or other. I can take a motion. So, five we'll minutes. Motion has been made by Commissioner Blankenhorn by your second. Hearing none, we'll move on. Let's move on. This is item 12. We'll go ahead through. This is a consent agenda. The items in this consent agenda below have been reviewed for the purpose of voting on all items with one vote. The item is the, for the Commission's consideration and decision. Item A is a DFA resolution number 36. 2016-2017 fiscal year. The resolution requesting the transfer permanent cash from the general fund to detention fund. Item two is number 37, so 2016-2017 fiscal year. The resolution requisition re requesting to transfer expenditures from fire protection fund to fire excise tax fund. Number three is number 38, 216-2017. Fiscal year, a resolution for requesting to adjust the 2017 fiscal year final budget to accurately reflect the budget's increase and or decreases of county funds pursuant to fiscal year and close out activities. Item B is 
budget line items, adjustments of fiscal year end part one, being a governmental fund. Item two is fiscal year end part two, general fund. Number three is fiscal year end part three, special revenue fund. Commissioners, or anything on the consent agenda that you want to discuss? Hearing none, to entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion to be made by Commissioner Blanton Morris and Commissioner Romero. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner Donald? Yes. Commissioner Blanton Yes. Commissioner Guidance? Yes. Next item is item 13. This is County Manager's Report and Matters. Mr. Leandro Cordova, please come to the podium wherever you are at this time. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, basically I'm going to sum up a couple things. I don't have a lot for you today. Uh, I did want to give a brief update um, on the Youth and Family Center as um, brought to my attention by Richard uh, yesterday. There has been a lot of work on the, on the building, but a lot of things have also come up, up on them. Uh, we are expecting a change order for that. Uh, we're hoping to have something before the end of the fiscal year. They weren't there yet. Uh, it could be anywhere up to $400,000 change order at this point. So I will have more information for you at a future meeting so I will let you know that that's where we're at at the Youth and Family Center at this time. Um, one of our projects, the Veteran Cemetery, uh, our current phase of fencing is complete. Uh, what you see out there is, is phase one. We will move on to the next phase, which will be in July, of the front part um, and some temporary gates. And we're certainly shooting for what we hope to do, a ribbon cutting in August, um, August 11th. This seems to be our tentative time right now for a ribbon cutting. Uh, Towns County uh, worked with uh, Town & Towns Marketing Department, uh, more specifically Karina Armijo, and who has tried to organize a co-op uh, grant application between Town & Towns, Towns County, and Towns Ski Valley. Uh, they did fill out the application with the Tourism Department and we were awarded. Towns County will be don or contributing about 9000 to the total amount. Um, and the biggest question I had is do we have to focus on the town or ski valley or can we focus on other parts of the county and we certainly can. Uh, the total proposal is looking at out-of-state tourism. We're trying to bring people here specifically to play outdoors essentially and to enjoy um, the musical scene of Taos County and Town and Taos, Taos Ski Valley. Uh, so that's good news. We were awarded and that's something that I appreciate the town taking the lead on. Uh, we've also, um, we'll be working with the Enchanted Circle Marketing Co-op again this year. Um, we'll be giving them $1,000 um, to help work on a joint initiative on their behalf for the entire Enchanted Circle. That is about all we have as a county to put into tourism and marketing, so we did our best to try and spread it out. Uh, NMAC conference last week. I appreciate all of the hard work um, of everybody. I specifically need to thank Anissa and Renell. I want to thank the commissioners, of course, for all the hard work you put in. I do appreciate everything that you did to help us get sponsorships and just to even be present and to help tout all of the wonderful things in our county. I heard nothing but compliments for our staff, nothing but compliments about the layout and, and the conference itself. And so in my mind, it was very successful. And I want to thank everybody, especially the hardworking team of Taos County. We had many great staff volunteers from every department. And um, I also want a special thanks to Cheryl from the Treasurer's Department, who really came through at the end to help support the hard work of everyone else. So, And great news, the best news of yesterday was Taos County received our PILT. And our PILT allocation was actually a little higher than we expected. We did receive $1.73 about 100,000 more than we were expecting. So we can move forward now um, with our capital improvement process and we can definitely complete the projects that have been in the pipeline for this summer oh, and start looking else. ahead. Yes, we can keep on moving and, and that's great news for all of us. So uh, I don't have anything else to present at this moment. I do stand for any questions on anything else that the commission may have to. Commissioner Lincoln. Hey, Chairman, uh, what are we thinking about with CDBG? I thought that, that was going to be gone, but apparently not yet. So it's not done yet. Uh, unfortunately, we are still bound by the joint project at the Newton County Center. So until that's complete, 
we are really um, looking forward. We're kind of evaluating all districts and all projects that we have in our pipeline. Uh, we had hoped that maybe coming out of the there could be something that further review that may not be the perfect pro um, project for us. So as we develop our pipeline, we hope to match the right project to uh, CDBG. Uh, but how about like renew if the uh, youth and family center is, is running over budget, can we join in for uh, additional funds on that? Or? I would have to look into that further. I don't know if I can answer that at this time. And how about the economic development aspect of CDBG? Is there any uh, ideas that are currently floating about for that? None that have been approached to me directly. Uh, as you know, we did support the town's um, support to Mr. Batra, who bought the Don Fernando Hotel, um, and that $500,000 allocation came to Towns County. As I understand, last year's CDBG cycle, Towns County saw more money than any other county in the state. So uh, that was very positive for us, but it also puts a lot of pressure on us to make sure that's spent well and quickly right. so that we can get into the next cycles. Good answer, right? That, that, uh, that, is, that makes perfect sense. Um, video, are you feeling confident that you'll be able to set up meetings in the near future and proceed with that line on uh, the school bus routes? I do feel confident about finding funding for Medio. I am not necessarily concerned, but I do feel that at some point we may need to split with the town and do our thing and they do theirs just for the fact that I don't know if we're going to get full funding from any one source. So it may be essential for us to cobble our different sources together, including our own reserves. But Camino de Medio has to continue to be our top priority of ours. It is failing by the day, it feels like. And, uh, the town is still kind of driving the bus in the next step of things, trying to finalize our contract with Sauter Miller so that we can get into the, the next phase of the land acquisition that we need to have to be able to move on to that next step. But I did a run into the Deputy Secretary of DOT last week at the conference, and he still wants to try and help us. But the money that was allocated is still not enough to complete the project end to end. So you know we do got to do our best to cobble it all together, but it may require us um, putting some of that in from reserves or from one of our other um, capital fund resources. One more. Um, the assessor's office, I was uh, concerned about the citizen comment regarding that particular piece of land. I would just like um, an answer on that. It doesn't have to be in an open meeting. It can. It's your call. Okay. I will continue to work on that. Thank you. Um, may, may I respond to that? Only we'll legal met with the representatives of that landowner and we'll be meeting with the assessor's office this week and we can report back to you okay. the next meeting. Thank you. New questions for Mr. Cordova? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cordova, the 10 acres that was fenced, I went out there, cut it. Look, is that only 10 acres or did they do the full 20 acres? Um, I do believe that's only the 10 acres. Okay, it just yeah. look huge. It's a large tract of property, it really is, and then the 20 we have next to it, we have 40 acres total, yeah, it does, but I can double check on that, but I do believe it was just the, five, uh, the 10, 10 of the 20, and we only did the back and the sides for now, so the next phase we'll be doing little bits of the ornamental, and then we'll do temporary fencing for the front until we determine final gate and entrance and that stuff. And then at some time, Mr. Cordova, if you could request Mr. Sanchez, Richard Sanchez to come and give us an update on all his projects, status of the Ag Center, this alarming $400,000 change order. Are we going to have to put up money for that? Um, so at some point, if he could give us a list on his projects and where they stand, um, I appreciate that. I'll work um, on getting that for the other. Okay, and then um, in the, we had committed last year for this ending fiscal year 10,000 to the New Mexico True with the Enchanted Circle Marketing. Did we pay them that 10,000? Yes. Okay, and then um, will we be able to join the Taos Chamber of Commerce uh, and pro provide that membership fee and be part of the chamber? We do need to look at it. It's a $5,000 membership. Uh, we did join last year and that's something that we have to consider between now and the final budget. I mean, it's a big amount of money did certainly feel we got some benefit, especially hosting the conference last week from the chamber, but um, if anything else, we may 
take our subscription level down a little bit. It is a large amount of money for the county to, to pay. Um, okay, and then um, will we be issuing letters of thank you to the sponsors that came forward at the very end? We'll be issuing letters of thank you to everybody that sponsored and everybody that really helped in a significant way. Okay. And then, did you, I just hear you say that that CDBG grant uh, for Batra's property is, we paid, that came out of our? No, we, we provided a letter of support, um, okay. just as the at the town's request, we provided a letter of support for that $500,000 um, economic development grant. I, I see, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Romero, Commissioner Romero, Mr. Chairman, I, I too would like to thank uh, the staff we're now that did so much work to, to making our conference a, a great success and we really appreciate all the work and all the effort that you guys put into it and uh, we'll, we'll look at you for the next conference we decide to bring you I would ask we get a few years of, of recruiting so that we can really <laughs> focus on it accordingly. Um, people love coming to towns. Uh, we're outside on the final night, and as the sun set, all of a sudden you see all these cameras come out. Yeah. You just enjoy that beautiful sunset. You can't find exactly the same anywhere else. So. All the events that uh, our staff planned and worked on were, were very classy, to say the least. And I appreciate that. Thank you for adding to that. I, I agree wholeheartedly. wholeheartedly. I, I want to say that uh, I want to appreciate in the manner that everybody as county employees and basically everybody that participated in behavior. I didn't get to participate in any of the after events, but uh, from what I understood, everybody behaved well, and that's, that's showing some professionalism, some class work. Those that participated, all those employees that were there, so just want to thank them for, for uh, putting on their, they call it military, class A attitude, and it worked out really well. Um, question. For you, Mr. Cordova, there's uh, potentially a possible ground ribbon cutting ceremony that can happen in Amalia. Do we have a date for that? <laughs> uh, that would be something I would ask Mr. Sanchez to report on. We do hope by the 11th we'll have the seal. Okay. I do hope I thought, considered giving you an update, but I have very little update to you on. We're still waiting for the final uh, approval of um, CID and all of those so we can get that seal. Okay. So just that way, the rest of the commissioners can go for a ride up there and go check it out. One more thing I forgot. Could you give us an update on the BLM free yard material permit? Yes, uh, that has been approved. I want to thank Mr. Jaramillo for working really hard with um, BLM to get that approved. So we do have, I believe, a three year window on that with 3,300 tons a year allowance, uh, roughly. And so um, I want to thank everybody that helped us get that but it is approved and we are able to start working on that real soon. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Cordova? One more thing I'll mention, Los Cordovas Road is being worked on and they're continuing to work on it and we hope that pavement gets down real soon but at, the, at this point they've been dropping materials and preparing it for that so real soon we should have a paved road from C110 all the way through. All the way to the sort of did, did they, Mr. Chairman, um, did you work or did our road department work with the uh, Vios Ranchos on lowering the uh, septic tank lids or the sewer lids? I know they worked with them. I'm not sure of the details of the, the final. Not the septic tank, but the manholes. I'm not positive on that answer. I, I would like to refer to Mr. Adamio, but I'm not sure. I know we worked with them. They were part of all of them. I passed through there yesterday and they were all gone, so I wasn't sure if they added more material to, to lower them or if they took them out or, or what happened to the animals. I can look into that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could yes. just add, there was some talk at NMAC about counties developing standard road policy, how roads are built regarding crowns and um, I'd like to somehow look into that so we uh, can avoid um, problems in the future with drainage and road issues. Um, but there was, I guess it was a contractor that was suggesting that counties develop um, a policy for how 
roads are built. And then with that in mind, I'd like to ask if, before the wet road construction begins, if uh, someone could con contact neutral domestics, um, maybe the utility companies, uh, just to see if there's plans to lay any water lines along wet road or possibly uh, broadband or I just want to make sure we don't do a road and then somebody's going to come back and cut it up, cut it up. So if, if you could make sure that there's no future plans for that. Uh, Chairman, uh, Commissioner O'Donnell, uh, Mr. Pacheco, and Ms. Chavez have met with all the utility companies and they're getting letters in hand for Whit Road and El Salto Road that the utility companies are uh, have no issues with what we're doing. Uh, El Salto, we're not going to be able to go as far on the road construction because that mutual domestic is planning a water project. So we're really going to touch a small, small section of that road uh, where the water line is not going to be reconstructed. So we are uh, doing a good effort to getting out there with the SACTIAs and the mutual domestics. Did you check with Canyon Mutual Domestic if they have any plans? Yes. Uh, and they're they, okay? They're okay. Okay, very good. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Commissioner O'Donnell, I appreciate the question. That's becoming a standard for all of our projects. So Mr. Pacheco is also already looking at policy. And so we have explored different county policies um, with the assistance of Mr. Haramio, and we've been working on that to try and fine tune it for us. So appreciate those, but we are certainly working on it as. Um, those were major issues that came up in our re retreat. And so I think it's admirable that uh, Mr. Pacheco has been working on these, and I know he spent a lot of time talking to other counties last week about what works and what doesn't work. Also, at the NBR TPO meeting, uh, Los Alamos, um, they have a software, they have a program that measures the condition of the roads, which helps them plan for future, similar to what one of our commissioners has been requesting, um, what roads get done according to their need and if there was a way we could inquire about that software program how much it costs uh, since we have our pelt money um, the possibility of using that and I can give uh, you uh, was Eric Martinez I guess Mr. Harmio that from Los Alamos um, but I can send you, he did send me an email and a link, but I didn't have time to go into the website and look. But apparently, you know, that seems like something we, we should do, is uh, so we know which roads to pave and... I'll look into it. We certainly still have a long way to go before we get to the revenues of Los Alamos County, but um, we'll it's certainly look into it and see what options we have. I feel we've come a very long way, and we do have a long way to go, but um, I'd rather put money into roads and software at this point when it's obvious when a road needs it. So we'll look at it and see how we could maybe look to plan that into our future. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Romero, with, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. With regards to field funding, any idea how other counties fare? Not yet. Not yet. I haven't had the opportunity. We received, um, I believe yesterday, um, the announcement. So I am curious as well to see if our extra 100,000 came from the phone, so yeah. how it was allocated, so I may be able to report back on the time. Okay, thank you. Hearing nothing else, next item is item 14, Commissioner's Report. And this is discussion and consideration decisions regarding the following. Item A is approval of Commissioner now to receive items for DM to attend the Mr. Groundwater Conference on Mr. July 12th. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I went last year. I found it very helpful, informative, and I am requesting to go again. I think the registration is 275, um, and I, I stay at a friend's house, so county does not bear the cost of hotel, just asking for mileage and food, for and the registration. For, 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 for Motion has been made by Commissioner Romero. We'll uh, I think we have a hearing that day, but do you know about that? Or maybe it's not the health board hearing? Is yeah, that the it's health yes. yeah. So it's on that day? Yeah, yes. it is. I get the 
it's just the site visit portion of it, and the, the regular full hearing is the following day. No, no. Are, are we doing them the same thing? We have proposed the oh. site visit on the 11th after our regular oh, meeting, okay. and then we have the full hearing on the 12th. So I don't know if you want to miss that or not, but it's the heliport that we proposed heliport in a while. If, if you miss a part of it, you can't participate, participate in the rest. Right. Could be a win-win, could be a lose-lose, whichever -lose. <laughs> side you think is best. I'd, I'd like to see if the commission would be willing to grant me approval, and at that point, choose let me, not to. I'll choose not to. Um, give, give me a little time to think about that. In that sure. case, I will second the motion. Motion to be made by Commissioner Romero, so by Commissioner Blankenhorn. Mr. Martinez. Commissioner Armada. Yes. Commissioner Armada. Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn. Yes. Vice Chair Baker. Yes. Thank you, Commissioners. Next item is new business to be considered for future commission meetings. Uh, I, I do have one thing just uh, for FYI, Commissioners, on July uh, 13th, there is a uh, EPA Chevron Open House Forum that will be open to the public from 5.30 in the evening to whenever. Uh, we are also, as a commission, um, asked if we'd like to attend a daytime or morning session with EPA to just discuss what the conditions are of the water chain plan program as far as historical concerns that we've had over the past five, six months. So if you're willing to participate, just let us know so we can make sure we have uh, that posted for a possible quorum and the council can, village chambers can be set up to fit those that show up. What's the date again? I'm sorry. July 13th. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else. No, thank you, Chairman. Commissioner O'Donnell. Yes. I did, an, I did my announcement with the future meeting, so I don't know if anybody has anything else. Hearing none. What is the will of the commission? Do we want to push forward or to your executive session or break? Now at 11.45, and come back in an hour at 12.45 and go to your executive session. Mr. Moulton. If we can, I have an appointment this afternoon. I don't know how the rest of the commission feels. Maybe we can break for one for lunch. Okay, with me. You know, like here or whatever. I don't know if I'm going to tell you this. Okay. So, we have to make a motion. So, move Mr. Chairman to break for lunch for one o'clock. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Ms. Martinez, please call the Commissioner Romero. Yes. 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 We'll be back at one o'clock. Yes. Yeah, I'll be back and get my reads. Yes. It is one oh six. I'd like a motion to come back in from our lunch break. So moved. Second. Motion to be made by Commissioner Lincoln second by Commissioner O'Donnell. Commissioner Clerk. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Vice Yes. Next item is item 15, House County Board of Commissioners make a meeting. Closed session, discussion, consideration regarding the following executive uh, limited personal matters. This may be discussed in closed session under the Meetings Act Exemption 10.15.1.H.2, which allows for discussion of limited personal matters. I'd like to entertain the motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Motion to be made by Commissioner Blankenhorn, second by Commissioner O'Donnell. Clerk, please call. Commissioner O'Donnell. Yes. Commissioner Blankenhorn. Yes. Vice Chair Yes. And for the record, Commissioner Romero is late. He will be able to participate and will notify the time for the clerk's records before time Mr. Romero gave. 
So we will go ahead and uh, go upstairs. Okay. Ask that the commission come up, uh, make a motion to come out of executive session. So, Mr. Chairman, second. Motion has been made by Commissioner Romero, second by Commissioner Blanken, born Commissioner Odama Hadigo. I mean, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Anna. Clerk Paul. I know you just let me do it. Uh. <laughs> Commissioner Romero. Yes. Commissioner Odama. Yes. Commissioner Blanken. Yes. I'm sure you Yes. Uh, it was an executive session. It is 3.45. Commissioner Romero had stepped in at 12, 112. Um, please commence our discussion. No action was taken. Only discussion of, of personnel matters was addressed. And no other discussion was taken. So um, next item on the agenda is adjourning. Move for adjournment, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion been made by Commissioner Romero, second by Commissioner Blankenhorn. Thank you, Commissioner, for today's meeting. I appreciate you guys having patience with me today, and I'll get better. Um, <laughs>